Welcome to Wendy's Bookworks. We are in the process of making a video to tell you about each of our products and why using these products will build skills that become the stepping stones to your child's success, whether he or she is at home or in the classroom. Research shows that hands-on activities build strong neural pathways in the brain, pathways stimulated by muscular movement, touch, color, visual perception, sound, and even smell and taste. What adult does not remember the smell of a new box of crayons or the temptation of eating those noodles or M&Ms you were supposed to be gluing on to that project? We believe that hands-on activities engage the brain and bring a broader and deeper understanding of a concept as the neurons interconnect and forge a strong foundation on which to build higher levels of intelligence. Every child has unique learning patterns. I have provided a wide range of activities using these same patterns so that you can find the best learning opportunity for the child's learning preference. We're going to start with number and shape art. This book has uh, patterns in it with nice big numbers. And then the pieces to turn the numbers into a character. So these are the pieces for number two. I am going to show you what the, what the uh, characters look like. One is for somebody special, that's me. Two eyes wink and blink and help me to see. Three wheels on a tricycle that I can ride. Four sides on a window. Let's look, what's outside? Now you can see these also have a little poem that goes along which gives uh, an indication of the value. One is somebody special. I have two eyes. This is a two and we have two eyes. This is a three and we have three wheels on a tricycle. So each number also indicates a value because of with a little poem, with the language. <clears throat> the children uh, do their own cutting and pasting. Uh, as they cut, they are learning the shape of the number, and as they are pasting, they're learning things about not only uh, the number and its value, but the world around them. So we might encourage them to um, color the, this, make this into themselves with their eyes, their own color, and do their, is their hair curly or straight? And if they are not sure what color their eyes are, let's pull out a mirror. This works great in the classroom, too. It's just a little hand mirror. They can look in a mirror and see what color their eyes are or what color their hair. Um, as they're cutting a hand, they're learning that the thumb is opposable. They're learning right and left. <clears throat> they're also here again on the two. They're learning about their eyes. And here, three, three wheels on a tricycle. The word tricycle also will come up later as a triangle. So we'll go on here with five. Five are the fingers I have on each hand, and when they make a, a handprint, they're going to remember that five is, this is the number five, and it takes five digits to, um, to make five. That's its value. Here we have six legs on a ladybug help it to stand. Seven days of the week here. And we have the flags with the seven days, naming the days. And eight legs on the spider made Miss Muffet say eek. Now if we look at the six and the eight, we see these curves, but on the 6, there's an opening. On the 8, it's closed. But on the 6, not only is this opening, is there this opening. So as they're cutting, they realize that there's a, a different shape. And then when they glue on the six legs, 
they're associating the six with the number six. The eight, although it's similar, now they have a different experience. The circles and the curves are closed, and they're gluing on eight legs. Nine pretty petals stretch up to the sun, and ten little toes really help me to run. When these patterns can also be embellished with paint, um, glitter, fuzzy balls, all kinds of things. We actually did two other um, videos and we will do another one showing all the other ways you can use these, these number patterns to increase their, their understanding and knowledge of numbers and their value. When the child is cutting the number, the eyes are visual, visualizing the shape, giving that information to the brain. The brain is telling the muscles how to cut. This information is stored, and each time the child cuts a new number or repeats and cuts a second number, the same number, the process is refined, and the brain establishes a file, so to speak. Children who do these kinds of activities have higher comprehension, are better able to integrate the one concept into another, and then make new associations much faster. They are less likely to struggle with visual reversals and concept confusion. Now let me show you the shapes. Here the rectangle turns into a magic hat. Triangle becomes a teepee, the square becomes a castle, the heart becomes a camel. Now if you give the child a heart and say we're going to cut out this heart and turn it into a camel, he's thinking, how are they going to do that? And sure enough, there it is. These kinds of activities help the child recognize these shapes in the world around them. The circle makes a teapot, diamond makes a rocket, and his friend the star becomes an astronaut. The oval can be a football or a high-flying blimp. This book also contains games. The first game I'm going to show you are little animals. And you can see that they have white, empty white rectangles. You can use a, a wipe off, wipe on, wipe off pen. Uh, what do they call it? Wa wa washable pen, and make these are open ended. So, for instance, right now I'm going to say this is the Q-tip is sticking through, and I'm going to say that's a five. I'm going to turn it over and check. Yes, there are five dots. I can go on to the next number. I'm going to say that's a nine. If I look on the back, yes, there are nine dots. As I said, this is open-ended. You can do one-to-one -one relationships, addition, early subtraction, just all kind of alphabet, just all kinds of things. It's a fun little game. They like poking the Q-tip through and then self-checking. The other uh, games that are contained in the book we have lots of file folder games. This uh, is a, a file folder game which has sheets for n numerals, number words, and sets, 1 to 20. And they can all be interacted. The sets can be matched to the word or the numeral. And again, then again, the numeral can be matched to a set, or the word can be matched to a set, or the numeral can be matched to the word. So they're all interactive. With this one here, we're counting astronauts onto a board 1 to 20 with the numerals. And here we're counting polar bears on a board 1 to 10 with numerals. Now, we stack and stick using the, um, this is double-sided tape 
which is removable. There's also double-sided tape, which is permanent. So you want the removable one, and it just goes on the back of the piece. And these can be stored, stacked like this. They're just stuck to one another. And then when you pull the game out, peel one off and stick it on. So again, that double-sided tape, removable. It acts like a little post-it note. We also count treasure chests onto a board of numeral words, number words, 1 to 20, and we count dinosaurs onto a board of number words, 1 to 10. These are shape games. Here we have a flat shadow, and they're going to match an animated, a more animated object. So they're looking at the shape, and then when they're looking at the object, can they see that shape in the object? Here we have a different slant on that. This is the wrapped object. It looks much more three-dimensional. Which of these objects? is being wrapped in that package. These help them uh, later with congruent shapes, identifying shapes, um, and that whole thing with flip, slide, and um, turn. Here we have like a little tanagram set. We give you lots of shapes, and you just run them off and cut them out of paper. We gave you three sets of patterns that are seasonal, so spring, summer, fall, and winter. And here we've made the rabbit, um, but they like to make just all kinds. You can just give them the, the bag of tenograms and, tell, and let them tell you what they're making and what they've used to make it. As they're working, you can say, well, what is this? Is this a, cir oh, it's a circle? What is this? Is that a circle? Which one is bigger? So more math language. What would the rabbit look like if you changed the circles? Would the little eyes even fit on this circle? He would have a very small head. Would he look like a rabbit? Things like that. Carry on a conversation while they're working. Here we have more structured shapes. <clears throat> and the idea here is that they're also looking at the shapes in their world around them. So. Here are rectangle shapes, little Pop-Tarts. Here's a square book. Here's a round muffin. We have also give you the words, circle, opal. We have words for each one. And we can compare. So four sides on a square, four sides on a rectangle. How are they different? How are they the same? Same with a triangle. Triangles have three sides. Remember our tricycle? So a triangle has three sides, but they're all, they all look different because the different lengths of the sizes make them look like they have a different shape. The last two file folder games in the book go into a little bit of addition and a little bit of subtraction. So the idea here is they're counting crayons, so they stack them up. One, for instance, this is three crayons here and three more crayons. How many, if I move them over to the box, do I have all together? More math language. How many do I have all together? Down here with subtraction, it's I have three flowers. If I take away two flowers, how many are left? So I'm adding, I'm putting together, I'm subtracting, I'm taking away. How many do I have all together? How many are left? These are critical language um, bits of math that become very important as they go on through school. Thank you very much. Uh, please look for our second video on number and shape art and we will show you more activities and ways